heard some chatter. Ryan yelled parrots, and they flew right past us. All across the United States, non-native species have established populations and found ways to thrive in what once was a foreign land to them. While some of these creatures are considered pests and detested by the humans they share the world with, others are quite likable and offer a unique opportunity to see a species that typically lives half a world away. When we were in Phoenix, Arizona, we took some time to search out one such species. Hey everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Burning. Today Ryan and I are at Steel Indian School Park to look for the rosy-faced lovebirds that live in Arizona. And it looks like a pretty cool park, so we're going to walk around, see if we can find them, and see what else we find along the way. Rosy-faced lovebirds are a very recognizable species, primarily because of the pet trade, where they are commonly sold. This same pet trade is also the reason they can be found in Phoenix, as all of these birds were either escaped pets or descendants of escaped pets. With an established population somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 birds, Phoenix is the most reliable place in the continental USA to find the species in the wild. We began our search unsure of how difficult the rosy-faced lovebirds would be to locate. What's your level of optimism? I'm pretty optimistic. Seems like the reports are pretty consistent, but, you know, that's been wrong in the past with if you're able to find something. Um, so we're going to head this way. It seems like... There was at least one personal hotspot that was over here, so I think that's our best bet. We walked around the perimeter of the park, slowly working our way to the spots we hoped would be best for the lovebirds. We found many white-winged doves and a few northern mockingbirds, two species very at home in urban environments. Also in the vicinity was a cactus wren and a brightly colored flycatcher that was taking care of its young. There's a cute little vermilion flycatcher family in this tree and they are fledged already so they just kind of follow the parents around and then the parents come and feed them. So they're out of the nest but they're not really doing anything yet but they are adorable. The vermilion flycatcher is one of the most beautiful flycatchers in all of North America with males having a strawberry red face and underside with a blackish brown back, tail, and eye stripe. We spent some time watching the young vermilion flycatchers and then moved on to view some of the other birds in the park. With the city of Phoenix sitting in the southwest, a few of the species in the park were birds exclusive to the region. A Gila woodpecker, a bird usually associated with cacti in the desert, was sitting in a tree offering some good views, and several verdins were flitting around as well. After observing many of the other species in the park, we turned our attention back to searching for the lovebirds, when suddenly, we spotted something. Just had some lovebirds zoom past. Um, I heard some chatter, Ryan yelled parrots, and they flew right past us. Uh, super vibrant when they go by, like greenish blues and pinks. Um, so we'll see if we can track them down. <laughs> really noticeable though. We followed the lovebirds until we reached a point where we could see them perched. Just as soon as they arrived, they departed. Got them. Epic parrot sighting. Every time I see urban parrots, it's just like one of the most exciting things for some reason. How pumped are you? I'm so excited right now. That was unbelievable. We gotta get some better looks now. These things are so cool. Looking in the direction they went, we noticed some of them drinking and bathing in a water feature. We then also noticed many lovebirds were in the tall palms in this area finally allowing us to get a full experience with these colorful and adorable lovebirds. The rosy-faced lovebird is a small member of the parrot family, native to southwestern Africa. They are a popular pet in the United States and can vary in color. Birds in the wild population are typically green with pinkish-orange faces and a blue rump and tail. Adult birds have bolder colors than the juveniles, and there's no plumage difference between males and females. Lovebirds got their name from the way they seem to show affection to one another. They can often be seen feeding each other and appearing to nuzzle. Interestingly, 
rosy-faced lovebirds do mate for life and will show erratic behavior akin to something like depression if they're separated from their mates for long periods of time. Parrots in general are social, and rosy-faced lovebirds are no exception, as they live in large groups and communicate almost constantly with squawks and chirps. Like other members of the parrot family, rosy-faced lovebirds are quite intelligent and have been seen exhibiting some interesting behaviors. While we didn't get to see it firsthand, they have been documented sitting near air conditioning vents, apparently using them to cool off during the hottest times of the year. The lovebirds were first documented here in about the 1980s and then uh, they've been able to breed successfully and now they have this population, which is why you're able to find them in the urban and non-urban areas of Phoenix, but in the city it's mostly those urban areas, just like this park. While humans are directly responsible for the introduction of the rosy-faced lovebirds into the United States, they have also had a major impact on populations in their native range. The volume of birds being taken for the pet trade has caused populations in some parts of Africa to decline, while in other parts of Africa, rosy-faced lovebird numbers have actually risen due to buildings and other structures serving as suitable habitats. Rosy-faced lovebirds are actually native to southwestern Africa in areas such as the Namib Desert, so they're definitely out of place here. They got most likely released due to the pet trade and now have an established population in Phoenix. So this is one of those species that you've probably seen at your local pet store before, maybe even know someone that's had one, but here they're technically wild for all intents and purposes now. It was no wonder this particular park was a haven for lovebirds, as not only were there plenty of buildings and trees to rest in, but also plenty of water. During our time in the park, we not only saw the lovebirds taking advantage of this feature, but many other birds as well, including gray-tailed grackles and another escapee not native to the country. Oh, it's a parakeet. Just saw a legitimate uh, parakeet in with the lovebirds too, so I guess there's some other stuff hanging out here too. We spent more time watching the lovebirds interact with each other and go about their daily lives. Then suddenly, they took flight and moved on. The parrots kind of all at once just took off in this direction. Uh, there was one left and then that one took off as well, so that seems to kind of be what they do is they'll be in a place for a certain amount of time and then they'll all take off and go somewhere else. A really great experience seeing these in the wild. Um, it's something I've heard about and really wanted to come check out, so I'm glad I was able to actually see it and uh, you know get some good views of these birds. We left the park feeling accomplished in finding these unique birds and being able to see how they've adapted to a continent they originally didn't inhabit. We are wrapping it up here at the park, but what a great experience to be able to see those rosy-faced lovebirds. Yeah, really cool to see parrots or parakeets in an environment that they don't normally belong in, but they've made a home for themselves here. Only time will tell what the long-term impact of the rosy-faced lovebirds in Phoenix will be. While non-native species will continue to be a hot-button issue, there's something about these birds that makes them hard to dislike. Whether it's their cute appearance, charming personality, or way they somehow seem to fit in naturally with the palm trees in the city, we enjoyed observing these charismatic birds and is what now become their home. We will be on the lookout for updates about the rosy-faced lovebirds in Phoenix. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.